Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learned the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, Look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. 
This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in, 47. Do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. The inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. It's just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar al-Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zayna Kazi. Sir, I understand. But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood? Crystal. Forty-seven. I would like to address the Providence partners directly. I want them to know why this is happening. And I have an idea, but it requires you finding a map terminal. Listen. I want to talk to the partners directly. Make them understand why all of this is happening. And that terminal gives me an idea. There's a server room near the Sheikh's personal reception. If you can gain access to it, we might be able to recover useful intel from it. We'll have to work together to hack the system, but it's our best shot. Right there. That's Marcus Stuyvesant. Providence partner, self-entitled, and arrogant little worm. He might not look like much, but he's done more damage to the world than you could dream. This is fascinating. Any news on the new guard signed a code name Pinky? I got word that he entered the building, but he hasn't reported for duty yet. Probably still down at the depot, getting his uniform. I just hope he's got his papers with him. I heard rumors that he used to work for that Dawood Rangan. You know, the Bollywood producer who died. Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> no, it doesn't. 
Stuyvesant is expecting a replacement guard. If you can locate him, we should be able to get within strangling distance of the little worm. Look, this is gonna make me look really bad. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Don't you worry. A colleague is also out there looking. But this is awful. I mean, I'm in my boxers and you are a woman. It's just so embarrassing. Oh, it's nothing I haven't seen before. But you don't understand. I'm military. We military men are used to punctuality. I, I was supposed to be ready and present my papers half an hour ago. Yes, you men in the army with your papers. Super punctual. I get it. Yes. Are you making fun of me? That's so cruel. Do you, do you know what a man is without his gun? <laughs> man in his boxes. Crying like a baby. Oh, you women will never understand. <laughs> and I don't think we ever will. I can't find it. Can't you just wear a Raider uniform? It would be pretty effective if you wanted to blend in. What? Are you trying to be like... Hey, how are you? Reporting for duty. About time. Our client has been going Excuse out of his me, mind waiting for you. Do you have the papers? Yes. Good. I'll call him now. Calm Who should down, address calm him? Down. It's classified. Check it out. So, you don't call him anything. But officially, uh, he's just known as codename Gary lost it. Sir, this is security. Just calling to let you know your new guard has finally arrived. About time. I'll be there in a minute. Yes, sir. See you soon. Okay. Wait here. He'll be here shortly. Okay. You must be my new escort. I have very high standards. Trust you will do your duty. You have your credentials on you? Well, this all looks very promising. Yes. Good. Oh, you worked for Darwood Rangan. Hope you weren't there on the day of his tragic death. Okay. This all looks very good. Okay. Walk with me. I need to go through some ground rules. Looking good today, sir. I expect you to be by my side 24-7, unless I say otherwise. Bathroom breaks are, of course, permitted, but only when I say so. I have a very important and delicate meeting today, in which I expect you to keep your ears closed, but your eyes wide open. Understood? Now, your papers were indeed impressive, but I need to see what you can do with my own eyes. My father used to take me hunting. He was an avid hunter. I personally hated it, but always admired his skill with a knife, and grew to appreciate what it takes to gut an animal. Have you ever tried to gut an animal? Yes. Good. Then you know it's not so easy as it looks. Like trying to stab a rubber ball. It bounces back if you don't stab it correctly. You're almost here. You have to understand. I didn't get where I am by blind faith. Okay, we are almost there. You see the shooting targets? Any fool can shoot a target. But with a knife? No. <laughs> That's where the talent lies. My father always used to say, if you are good with a knife, you're even better with a gun. I want to see your skills. I don't know why, but I've always trusted a man who would throw a knife. <laughs> I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a field day with that statement. So, show me what you got. Do well and you work for me. Fail, you get out of here, and I never want to see your face again. Let's just hope he's half as good as you were. Only time will tell. But I doubt it. You cocky idiot. That was quite spectacular. It was 
a magnificent performance. I like you. I think we will get along just fine. You gained his trust. What to do Thank with you all your that power? Take the rest of the day off. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. You impressed me. You really did. But let's get to work. Some things you should know about me. This is very much on a need-to-know basis. I am here incognito. So I want you to stay close, but not too close. Especially when we are out in public. If you see a man with a bodyguard, it draws attention. Understood? Yeah, of course you do. You got him, 47. Marcus Stuyvesant won't be a problem anymore. Let's move on to Carl Ingram. We're not done yet. Perfect. That's Carl Ingram, Providence well, partner yes. and brass balls billionaire. Yeah, just a legendary political fixer, Ingram is old money and as rotten as they come. Which has been proven time and time again throughout history. Not bad. I need a... Okay, that's enough for now. Don't trust anyone. That's enough for now. That's enough for now. We got him, 47. Soon there will be no more Providence. You need to find an exit. Our business is done here, but it's far from over. That's never going to change. I'm not pretending to have all the answers. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. 
I don't like executive decision makers. Look, you don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did, she'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Whitmark, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. 
Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Considering the fact that our spot is no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, so don't worry. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47.
Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. Maybe that's where it is. What is? My lost button. The one you couldn't find at the graveyard. Wouldn't it be a good idea for you to go and look for it? Patrick Maybe you Carlyle. Wash his car twice? Can you tell me where you Patrick were yesterday evening? Oh, that's Jeez, nothing. It's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him, then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff are all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? 
Zachary found dead in his bed this morning, or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy. And Mother will surely have a strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Yes, hi, Cat. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind, except Perhaps I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. 
Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? Fight for your... Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Bad news, I'm afraid. Oh, we don't have any extra fuses. Ethel looked everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No power, no portrait. Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Expect the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't, can't we just take a fuse from another fuse box? Uh, I, I guess we could do that. Good. I'll finish setting up, and then we'll grab the fuse just before you call down the family. Good. Yeah, that's a good plan. Ask her out. Get to know her in a personal way. <laughs> you could try. Do you mind? I need to be left alone, okay? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47?
Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. This is Madame Carlyle's office. Good today, sir. Please step inside. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emma's mother, Jane, who was the fiancé of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emma to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used the poison from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. 
No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. Brilliant, sir. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Oh, sounds like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? It works. I'm ready for I the show. Perfect. I'll call the family down now then. Excellent, 47. Madame Carlyle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. Such a loser. But you're not. You're a professor, you're artistic, you've got your music. I mean, that's really something. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see to today. I'll do my best. Right, get in position. Let's get this over with. Chin up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nose wreck. Stop bickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to lighten the mood. Will be enough. No need to spend the entire day here. I want to stress that I expect absolute discretion about everything you've witnessed today. No one will ever know I was here. Good. Would you like some help writing the eulogy for tomorrow? I can draw something up in 15 minutes. Are you coming, Mummy? I just I need some fresh air. I must do it. I'll be in shortly. You go in. No matter if you knew I had help. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Thank you, Miss Burnwood.
good. Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. Look closer. I'm telling you, the file is trash. The Constant doesn't so much burn his bridges as blow them up. Arthur Edwards, whoever he was, don't exist anymore. His personal data somehow deletes itself from any system that records him. Way beyond advanced. The partners spared no expense to make sure their controller would be untraceable. How untraceable? Look, I did what you asked, but Gray's gone and I'm no Diana. I'm not who you need right now. You gotta be kidding me. ICA? I used every encryption known to men. Who are these guys? the best. It's only a matter of time before they get lucky. We need to take them down. You and which army? I know where the agency stores its files, mission reports, client data. If we leak it to the public. You want to whistleblow the ICA? It's the path of least resistance. Turns out, you are who I need right now, Olivia. I do this and I'm out. So, what are we breaking into? Data facility in Chongqing, China, run by a man called Hush. Of course. The ICA site in Chongqing houses the agency's data storage and analyst division. Needless to say, security is daunting. The state-of-the-art server vault is biometrically wired to the facility's two overseers. Imogen Royce, behavioral analysis pioneer, and Hush, a data security guru with a taste for fringe transhuman experimentation. Tell me about Hush. A former cyber terrorist for the Ministry of State Security in Kedanyang, who fled his country after one of the Po regime's periodic purges. He made a career doing cybersecurity for dark web deplorables, human traffickers, organ harvesters, scum like him with no code or conscience. ICA sure can pick them. No offense. Can you disable security? A dual authentication protocol ensures that any handling of data must be directly authorized by Hush and Royce. The proverbial human factor device to make the system impenetrable. Luckily, I found a loophole. If both overseers should unexpectedly die within a short space of time, the system reverts to a temporary fail-safe protocol, which I can bypass. Take them off the board, and you'll have free access to the data core. And I'll handle the rest. And you're sure it'll work? Look, I know, Hush. If I'm wrong, 
We won't live long enough to regret it. All right. I will leave you to prepare. Chongqing, China. This city is Big Brother's wet dream with more than 2.5 million cameras covering 15 million people. Privacy is a four-letter word in this place. It's pretty ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the ICA keeps its most valuable secrets here. You'll find Hush conducting his fringe experiments in an abandoned apartment building. While Imogen Royce, the archivist, runs a day-to-day -day business of the ICA data facility. I just hope you know what you're doing, 47. How strange. Check that out. Oh. Nothing. Yeah, sure. I need to get back to work. Jeez, what is that? How strange. Oh. You got the bastard hush. Now go get Imogen Royce and we can get to the core. Yeah, command. I'm at the scene. Understood. I'll handle it. Gonna clean it up right now. Ron Jun's not coming in? Yeah. Luggage lost somewhere along the way, and the airline is trying to avoid their responsibility. I'm hungry and I'm tired, and I want to straighten everything out before I'm doing this. Yes, so so. Just let me know when you're ready. Oh, uh, did you bring the P41 we left Are you in you the apartment? Sir. No, I wasn't informed that I should. Oh, very sorry, Mr. Pritchard. We need you to bring the P41 to get the tour. Is procedure. Please pick it up before you come and find me. I'll be waiting by the stairs in the back of the restaurant kitchen. Why? Why? Get that water ready. Yes, I'm working on it. Hey there, you can go right in. 
No, oh, I'm I not eating. Focus while well, the kitchen feels You went straight to the restaurant. Kitchen. Find your inner self. Close your eyes. Focus your mind on the kitchen. Focus on the kitchen. That's what I do. That is a calming bonus. Hey, get out of my face, okay? Just glad it's not me! Have a nice evening, sir. Mom, you can't call me when I am at work. I'm ready to inspect the facility now. Good. I hope you enjoyed the food. Did you bring the P-41 we left for you in the apartment? Yes. I have everything I need. Good. Let's continue the tour. Continue, you may say. We haven't even started the tour yet. But we have, without you even noticing it, Mr. Pritchard. Invisibility is the best security there is. You see, the restaurant is, in fact, a front that lets all ICA personnel arrive unseen. Who notices a dumpling cook on his way to work? Dressing the part takes you a long way. ICA guarantees absolute discretion to all clients. We take that promise very seriously. As you will see on all steps of the tour. Let's step inside. Doesn't look like much, does it? Ms. Chen and visitor, welcome. Please report to security desk for visitor sign-in. Will do. I love the facility AI. It's really looking out for us. And we're in. The inside is a self-contained modular build that can be disassembled and removed in less than 12 hours if we are compromised. No trace we will ever hear. I agree. Leaving no trace behind is the only sensible MO. The outside shell is a building marked for demolition. We've put a hold on it with city planning. A deliberate misplacement of the order. But have people in place to rectify that. At first shift, city construction will move in. Our policy around ICA personnel is that they are a resource, but also a risk. On top of contractual repercussions if breaches occur, we perform detailed vetting on everyone. The first, Blunt vetting is a frisk. We have, of course, never had any employees trying to bring unauthorized weapons inside the facility, but we do consider the step important. I'll need to start the setup of your visitor security clearance here, Mr. Pritchard. How much do you think 
Please give me your P41, Mr. Pritchard, so we can get things rolling. Thanks. I'll get the procedure started. It'll just be a few moments, so feel free to have a look around. I'll meet you on the other side of the frisk. Naturally, you'll have to be frisked like everyone else. No exceptions, Mr. Pritchard. This will just take a sec, sir. Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. Good, you're here. I've started the security clearance process. It will take a little while since you're covered by the Zero Protocol. All your data will be encrypted and inaccessible without your authorization. Only Facility AI will use it for ID analysis. Fully anonymized, of course. But we can go a few more steps on the tour while it's validating. ID analysis? What the hell does that mean? Give me a minute. I'll try to find out. As I said, personnel is the greatest asset but also the greatest risk of the ICA. The work we do here exerts high-level pressure on our employees, and there is no room for mistakes. We perform a daily, multi-layered, full-body scan to guarantee that no employee will act erratically because of PTSD or other mental issues, drug use, physical health issues, external pressure, or moral hesitancy. The scan only takes a few seconds. Come on, it's this way inside. I'm sorry, but we can't proceed beyond this room until your security clearance is finalized. So why don't you have a little look around while we wait, Mr. Pritchard? It should be here shortly. Shit. We need to intercept that 47, or the facility AI will blow your cover. Get me into one of those computers and do it fast. You've got 60 seconds before all hell breaks loose. Granted. Good. I'm in. And you're safe. That was a close one. timing. Your clearance just came through. Must continue. Let's step inside. I'm thinking about getting so, some of those as you see, we are wild. very serious about security. What we protect is, after all, core to all ICA operations. We, and we alone, store all legal work, contracts, target profiles, sure. employee I'm files, contract nice. documentation, well, apparently, and validation, they can help regulate and your so sleep schedule too. Furthermore, because we handle like, all current operations, up. effectuate logistics or personnel and equipment. Our analysts do the client vetting, target profiles, and of course, offer real-time contract support to handlers and operatives. Storage and transmission of sensitive information like that takes constant vigilance to keep safe. We have a team of engineers solely dedicated to that task, and on top of that- Oh, good. There she is. Hi, Imogen Royce. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Likewise. That's Imogen Royce. Quite the bitch, apparently. Nothing wrong with her look, though. Edgy. After you.
This is the blast and EMP shielded call room, the nervous system of the ICA, where we store the past and facilitate the present. In general, only a handful of people can access this room. Hush and myself, plus bodyguards, and a chosen few of the engineers. I'm the most likely person to meet in here because I perform a regular physical check-in on the core console as a supplement to the remote authentication procedure. We have a strict routine of daily core maintenance. Part of that procedure is a flash process evaporating all biological matter in the room. You can see Reed through that window. It's her job to initiate the maintenance. Don't worry, we're safe as long as the safety mechanism is engaged. Even if Reed presses the button, the procedure will not happen until we leave the core room. The doors to the core room are all equipped with... You know what, screw this tour. I know why you're really here. Cutting to the chase, I see. Knowledge is power. More importantly, knowledge is opportunity. Let me demonstrate. You have a sixth sense for irregularities. And although Hush's recent behavior has not been reported, it has no doubt brought you here. You do have authority to shut down unwanted efforts, but at heart, you are progressive and not the stickler everyone thinks you are. You have sway with the board, and as I see it, your opinion is now what decides my future and the future of the ICA. So here we go. Imagine this. Having a time schedule on a target with minute details on locations, durations, and purpose. A detailed layout of a target's actions within a defined time frame. That would transform a contract into a surgical dance of precision. No mess, no fuss, low cost. Just how I like it. I've been working on a prediction algorithm based on a combination of big data analysis and micro-targeted surveillance of defining target markers and my results are astounding. All this state of the art is nothing but heavy old fashioned machinery compared to what I offer. Analysts preparing detailed files, dedicating days, weeks to prepare our contracts, gone. Handlers and analysts supporting our operatives during missions, gone. Teams for cleanup and media manipulation in the rare case something unforeseen does happen, all of it, gone. I asked you to imagine that scenario. But what good is imagination when you can see it with your own eyes? I've set up a little demonstration Looking for good, you. Looking good, man. Looking good. Three employees, unaware that I can accurately predict their behavior. Firing them will result in an already clearly defined reaction. On the top left, we have Sharon Reed, who you saw downstairs. She is a dutiful and trusted employee. If she is to be fired, my algorithm predicts with a certainty of 97.8% that she will finish up her most important tasks before she leaves the building. Specifically, she will press the maintenance button within 11 seconds. Jeremy Bolt. The guard in the lower left is as tough as nails when on duty, but in private, he's a real mummy's boy. If fired, he will immediately call his mother and at her advice, seek out who he considers his best friend for support. My personal guard, as it stands. Me? Really? Well, that explains why he's always next to me at lunch. At the top right, you see Alicia Reynolds. Bright and very passionate about her job. However, also very possessive about her contribution. My prediction is that she will try to disable the work she has done for the ICA. If she's not allowed to enjoy her results, no one is. Specifically, that means she will try to enter the call room and disable the safety mechanism. I'll leave you to consider your choice of who you want me to use for the demonstration. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right back. I will have a closer look. Maybe your project could play a part in the future of the ICA. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right back. Oh, and if you decide to leave the room, a guard will escort you around. Safety protocol. Thought I'd just mention it. Jeremy Bolt, 
I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. What? That can't be right. Code 41 is confirmed effective for your employment status. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good. Sharon Reed. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Jerry, I think I've just been fired. I have no idea. I thought it was going really well. Alicia Reynolds. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Don't mind me, sir. I'll be escorting you around. Procedure. I'm ready to see Royce now. I'll let her know. The VIP is ready to see you. Okay, great. Oh. Wow, you've been busy. Oh. It really is mesmerizing to see the precision of the predictions as they play out, so I can't say I blame you. I trust you're convinced by the demonstration and agree that this is the future for the ICA. I mean, how could you not? So, you'll probably want to dive into the project documentation and write your recommendations right away. You're free to use my... Both targets down, good. Just give me a second, and I'm in. You can now access the core 47. Sealing the room and dimming the windows 47. No need to worry about intruders. It's all here. Clients, operatives, every hit the ICA ever sanctioned. Enough to shut them down for good. But first, you need to locate all files referencing Diana and yourself. You go way back. I didn't realize that you... I don't know. I get why you want to protect her. So, wipe all the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish the rest. set up a link to an information non-profit site. 
When you press that button, it's up there and the whole world will know. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. You really okay with this? It's who you've been for so long. Maybe it's time for a change. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert them we were here prematurely. Shit! I missed that. We're blown, 47. I can hold the doors for a little while. Use the fence to get out. Go! Now! All personnel. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. I'm gonna create some havoc, 47. Make the core meltdown. Maybe we'll divert their attention a bit. Warning. Core overheating. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. shell causing shockwaves across the world, the so-called ICA files, the disclosure of a... You win. So, what happens now? The ball's in your court, Miss Burnwood. I do have other candidates, you know, most of whom have never tied me to a chair. You've seen the news. That was 47 acting on his own. He is untethered. He is unstoppable, and he cannot be bargained with. He will find you, Mr. Edwards, and I'm the only chance you've got. I'm listening. 47 has one weakness. Me. something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Harold. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. Because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. 
Not unless you want it to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my sight for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. Ready, Pam? Three, two, one, and... For more than two decades, New York-based law firm Morgan Yates & Co. has been among the most... Mr. Yates? It's Aaron, sir, F from the firm. I came as quickly as I could. Yes, sir, I have the files. Sorry it took so long, but I had to access our remote server to print everything, and I, I couldn't get my VPN to... Right. Sorry, sir. I'll be right inside. Oh, my lord, is... Yo, there's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me. Okay, man. Vamos. They're up for this. I don't want to piss off someone who can take my head off from a thousand yards away. They're bored out of their wits. Mm. Go on, just get some. It'll be fun. Okay, let's see. I'll take that watermelon. Hold on. And send. Go on then. Tell them. Morgan, we just sent you a target ID. Yep. Very dangerous, sir. Calls himself Mr. Scuba. Imagine oh, you're in a fight to the right? Huh. The rich scratch their asses too when they think nobody's watching. <laughs> Don't be crude. Pay attention. Yates wants us on high alert. We've been at this for months. Ever since the 1% killings began, nothing's gonna happen. I know. When you start thinking like that, that's when it does. Who are we on the lookout for anyway? Yates didn't say. Just a standby for a picture ID and a kill order. Fine. I'll just practice my lip reading. Don Yates as the sniper.
Falcon, I have a target request. Standing by for visual ID. Use your camera. Over. Falcon. Sending target ID. Over. Confirmed. Do I take the shot? Over. Take the shot. Over. Target is down. Over. Falcon, I have a confirmed security threat. This is no drill. Over. I don't have a clear shot. Reposition target into line of sight. Over. Hey there. Big guy. Well, enjoying the party. A bit crowded for my taste. Mm-hmm. Have you been down to the gardens? It's remote. Quiet. You'd like it. Bring your friend. I might just do that. She could use a bit of downtime. If only it weren't for the muscle. They follow us everywhere, I'm afraid. Where there's a will, there's a way. Excuse me. Say, since you're not leaving my side, would you mind slipping down to the gardens? I'm dying for a smoke, and I don't want to bother anybody. Ah, yes. The vilification of smoking. A bit of systemic nudging and public opinion falls flat on its back. <laughs> Bunch of lemmings. Anyway, lead the way. Would you like to go tomorrow? Jeez, how many have you heard? I'm serious. You've seen death in the CIA as a herald. You've done some harrowing things. Don't tell me you've never thought about it. No, not even once. I don't much care for dying. And hey, perhaps we never need to. They've done some amazing things with reverse aging over at Ether. Take the shot. You wait over. Stay. And you have no guilt? Target is down. Over. Stop. Aaron Ford Jr. Don Yates is expecting me. Okay. Right this way, Mr. Ford. It's a gift.
You can set up your shop in here. Mr. Yates will be right with you. All right, you're on the clock, Aaron. Dazzle me. What do we got on Burnwood? She's an orphan. Parents killed by one of our clients, Blue Seed Pharmaceuticals. The experience taught her to seek justice outside the system. Would you like me to go through her records? They're quite extensive. Well, somebody did their homework. No, just her involvement in the 1% killings. Starting with our clients. Details, please. The gorier, the better. Well, here's one that might interest you. Janus, a retired KGB spy master, is eliminated in his adopted hometown of Whittleton Creek, Vermont, along with his bodyguard, a former Secret Service agent. The methods in question are quite ingenious. Just take a look here. Sapienza, Italy. Ether Corp employees Silvio Caruso and Francesca DeSantis are targeted for assassination by Burnwood and her agent. In the process, a billion-dollar research project is also sabotaged. A DNA-specific virus. Take a look right here, Mr. Yates. You're on fire, Aaron. Don't quit now. Take a good look at this woman. What do you see? A monster? Revolutionary fanatic? Violent extremist? You should. You should take a good, hard look at this. Graceful woman with the insuringly professional demeanor. And imagine her hands soaked in the blood of your colleagues. Including my friend and business partner, Ken Morgan. A bloody trail of carnage and destruction ending with the partners themselves and Arthur Edwards, our superior, the new supreme head of Providence, is giving her the keys to the kingdom. Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Yes. They should get their blood flowing. Hello, hello. Feel free to call me at your leisure. Have a good day. <coughs> machine. Since when do I get the machine? It's done. Now what? Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47.
How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand's neurotoxin. Transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. Are you still here? Still clinging on to your self-image? Agent 47, the Apex Predator. Always hiding behind the headlines. Was perfection its own justification? Or a willful distraction? A wall built contract by contract to shield you from the uncomfortable truth. You're exactly the tool they bred you to be. <laughs> Quite a piece of work you are. How could you possibly function on your own? You never even had a name. Until I gave you one. That's him. Burnwood never ceases to surprise me. You really are a most singular individual. And to think, she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. What's he doing? Is he still looking at us? I'm afraid so. Poor Sap just won't accept his days are done. Perhaps I should take him out to the woods and set him free. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> he was a loyal tool. But everything goes the way of the horse and cart eventually. I couldn't agree more. Are you done? The toxins are playing into your fears. Don't let them. Come on. Got to get your head straight. She wants me dead. She has every right to after what we did. But that's not what is really going on. She chose power. In the end, she was just like them. No. She found a way to turn Edward's own cleverness against him. The rest is up to you. I don't know how. You do know. Diana! 
coming. Once you dispose of Edwards, I will dismantle Providence from the top down. It will finally be over. All you have to do is embrace the past.
suppose there's any point calling for help. No. Seems I brought this on myself. Well played, Miss Burnwood. Do you really think she'll be able to resist all that power? This is not how people work. She rejects the power, not the responsibility. <laughs> A noble idea. But please join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. <sighs> well, I had to try. Go on then. Do your thing. At least I die knowing who I am. resignations at the top level of international finance continues as Milton Fitzpatrick CEO Alexander Fannin joins the president of Hamson Oil, while he meets on his and a bunch of other It's been a long time, Agent 47. That's not who I am anymore. The pact is done. The past. Death. And yet, here you are. I choose this path because I can. There will always be people like them. So there will always be people like us. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back. 